Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the Old Testament and how it points to Christ. Um, and so we start out in Genesis 1 and 2 with God creating this perfect world, um, this very good, orderly, beautiful world. And in Genesis 3, there's the serpent who comes in and we don't get a lot of information about him right off the bat. Um, but he tricks the people, uh, Adam and Eve, into taking of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And that, God promises, leads to death if you eat it. And he says, don't, don't do that. And, and they do. Um, and death is literally understood as separation. Um, we think of it as separation from a body. Um, they were separated from God. Um, and, and that is the curse that every single man and woman uh, is born into now. Um, and, and so they had to leave the garden because they were no longer holy. Um, and if they stayed there, they would be destroyed by God's perfection and beauty. Um, and so the rest of the Bible is all about um, God bringing us back to Eden. Um, and, and that's, that's what's so beautiful about it is it's all about us coming back home. And, um, so in Genesis 12, we meet this guy named Abraham and he is promised to be the father of many nations. And that through him, a, a seed, a singular seed, um, one descendant would bring about the salvation of the world and crush that serpent, uh, that we saw in, in Genesis three, um, this source of evil and, and discord. And so, um, he goes and he, um, you know, starts a family and there's, there's a lot of blessings, and a lot of hardship along the way, but then, um, his family goes down to Egypt eventually, uh, during a famine. And, um, you can read about that in Genesis 38 through 50, but, um, they were called to come back and they don't. Um, and so they stay there for several generations. And then after a few hundred years, there's a, an evil Pharaoh who arrives, um, and he oppresses the people because he doesn't realize who they are and what their history was. And he doesn't really care, honestly. Um, and he's scared about their, um, progress. And so, uh, he makes them slaves and then God raises a man named Moses who, um, saves them from their sins and, and from, the slavery in Egypt and eventually brings them back into, um, uh, into the promised land that, that he was given, um, by God. And so, um, Abraham, that is who was given by God. And so, um, he also gives them the law and, or, or we, um, better understood as the instruction of God. And that's the Torah. And, um, he also writes the first five books of the Bible, which is called the Torah. Um, and so he accounts for all the history of Israel up until that point. And then he delegates Joshua to be the one who actually leads them into the promised land that he's not allowed to go into. Um, and he, he dies right before, right before they enter. And so then you have, um, Joshua who doesn't raise up, raise up another leader. And so then, um, God has to raise up judges, uh, to continue on that, that tradition of leadership and protection from their enemies until they get to for Samuel, where he anoints a king like the other nations. They asked for a king like the other nations, which God didn't want to give to them. Um, he wanted them to have a king. And that, that's very clear from way back in Genesis. But um, they asked for a king like the other nations. And so they um, sorely missed out uh, because they got a king named Solomon, or sorry, not Solomon, Saul, <laughs> who uh, is a very bad king. And he um, does a lot of wicked things in the eyes of the Lord. And then God raises up David to be a new king. Um, and it's interesting because David is not just a king, but he's also described as a prophet and as a priest. Um, and so these three titles, prophet, priest, and king, are all very important titles that um, were actually originally held by the people in Eden, Adam and Eve. Um, they were prophets, priests, and kings. And um, maybe at some point I'll, I'll go into that. But um, basically, David becomes this figurehead for what the Messiah, this, the savior, the seed, um, from Genesis is going to look like. Um, and so his descendants come up and, uh, none of them are promising. Um, even, even David himself has many pitfalls, you know, adultery and, and censuses and everything else. And, um, so he, uh, proves that he's not, not the Messiah that they're looking for, that they're still looking for someone, uh, that's going to come through him. And, uh, we continue to go on and, uh, his son, um, brings a lot of sin and iniquity into the kingdom. And that results in the, um, civil war that breaks out between his son, um, David's grandson, Rehoboam. And that separates the top 10 tribes of Judah, top as in like Northern, sorry. Um, and so they split off into Israel and then Judah, um, and Benjamin, they become the Southern kingdom of Judah. And so then for, um, up until the exile, you have 
these two nations. Um, in around 722, I believe, Assyria comes and destroys um, Israel. So they are scattered among the nations, but they are never restored as a nation until after the exile, um, which comes later in around 576, um, sorry, 586 BC, there is a, um, the, the nation of Babylon comes and attacks um, Israel and they are destroyed as well um, and sent into captivity this time. Instead of being dispersed among the nations, they are, they are preserved. Um, and that's really cool because God is actually, he's judging them for the fact that for the last 490 years, they haven't kept the Sabbath year. Um, every seven years, they were supposed to rest the land um, and be provided for, but they didn't. And um, so if you do the math, that's 70 years of missed Sabbaths. And so God says for 70 years, I'm going to force the land to rest and you are not going to be allowed to be in it. Um, and so that's what happens. And very few people uh, stay behind. Most of them are from Babylon and, and they are the only ones in the land. Um, and so the land is allowed to rest uh, finally, just like God promised that it would. And so that's a continuing theme is that God's promises are always kept, whether they are in your best interest or not. Um, that is your choice to make. Um, and so God loves us and he wants us to be protected and to be blessed by him. But um, ultimately it's our choice and he's never going to force that on us. And, and that's really cool. Um, and that's something that I love about him. And so then as we go on, um, Babylon is this oppressive empire and they eventually are taken over by Persia. Um, and this King Cyrus, he is anticipated hundreds of years prior, actually about 120 maybe, um, by Isaiah, who says that this man Cyrus will come and restore, um, literally knows his name. Um, and, and he reads all these different prophecies from different prophets, um, Isaiah and Jeremiah and a few others. And he is most, um, like there are historical accounts of him doing this um, outside of the Bible that say that he actually read these accounts and was inspired and motivated by them to do what God promised that he would do, um, which is amazing. And so he sends the people back to Israel and to Jerusalem and they restore the the um, the city and the walls and then the temple and um, everything is as it should be, at least on the outside. Um, but the problem is that uh, the first temple that was built by Solomon, um, we see the dedication and then the coming of the Lord and his glory to fill the temple. Uh, and this never happens in the second temple. Um, and, and there's there's promises by prophets that this this temple would come and, and it would be uh, full of the glory of the Lord and that the, fo the former glory of Solomon's temple would not even compare to the latter glory of this future temple that was coming. And yet this temple that they just made is nowhere near the, the grandeur of the original temple and there's no glory in it. There's there's no presence of God in it. And so um, for about 430 years, they go um, without any words from the Lord. And and no one hears from the Lord. No prophets arise after Malachi to to give a word from the Lord. And they are, um, they're missing out basically. Um, and, and they are longing for this restoration of relationship with God. Um, and that's what finally comes through Jesus in the New Testament. And um, he shows himself to be the temple of the Lord, uh, which is amazing. And so all these prophets are describing and anticipating this Messiah that would come, picking up off of all the language from Eden and from uh, the seed that would come, promised to Eve and then promised to Abraham that would um, strike the head of the serpent and destroy him and then restore all of the nations of the world and bring them under the righteous rule and protection and provision of God. And so that is what happens. Um, and so that's what we see in the New Testament. And that is what we are going to focus on for the next couple months. So um, I hope that you enjoy this and that this is um, helpful for, for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to um, message me or, or leave comments in, in the YouTube and I will um, get back to you as, as quick as I can. So thank you guys. And I'm going to be really excited about walking through the New Testament with you guys. Um, so go and be blessed in Jesus' name.